with Mirai, what happened was we have a family friend. He is, um, his name is Alexander Selimian. It turns out he's 75 years old and he spent the best years of his life finding a way to solve the planet's problem, wow. which is like climate change. And when they say like one person can't change the world, this guy actually did. Wow. The problem is that he's stuck in a landlocked country. You know, Armenia is beautiful. It's a wonderful, incredible country, but it's landlocked. And you don't get, it's, there is no Silicon Valley. There is no like, you know, these kind of uh, investment opportunities and stuff there, right? So a couple of, you know, like a year ago, two years ago, I, I, I sat down with him. He's like, Sako, he's like, I know you're creating different companies and stuff. He's like, can I pitch you something? Uh -huh. I was like, yeah, sure, what's up? He's like, so this is something that I've, I almost gave up on. I was like, okay, what is it? And he's like, so I built this probiotic, like a super probiotic. And probiotics are, you know, healthy bacteria, basically. And this bacteria are able to basically biologically upgrade the body. Not just of humans, but of animals. Yeah. And I said, well, what's, what's good about that? He's like, well, think about it. He's like, how many animals do you think are raised around the world? I said, well, maybe like 5 million, 10 million, you know, 5 billion, 10 billion. He's like, no, no, it's 150 to 200 billion. Wow, yeah. I was like, Jesus that, Christ. That's livestock numbers? Livestock. Yeah. Do you realize that no, yeah. over 90% of animals are, are factory farmed, industrial farmed? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a huge thing. And there's all, <laughs> with all these documentaries now, now it's a mainstream issue and everything. And he was telling me about this, like, this probiotic blend that they put into a milk, whatever. And he was blowing my mind. And I was like, I get it. I was a genetics and cell biology major. Like, First of all, when he pitched me, I realized how little I know about the planet I live on. And he gave me a full picture. He's like, basically, Sako, if we don't change industrial agriculture in the next few years, we are all fucked. Mm. I said, well, why? He's like, because industrial agriculture is the largest industry on the planet. Mm. It is the first industry. Mm -hmm. It employs over a billion people. Mm -hmm. He's like, it's basically a giant operating system mm. that is never going to stop operating. That's, mm. where, that's where, how we survive as a species. Yeah. But the problem is... If you can't stop it, how do you fix it? Yeah. It, and so his proposition was, what if instead of telling the whole industry to just shut down this or break that or lose money, what if we can help them make more money by actually adjusting the way they operate? I said, well, that would be brilliant. And he's like, well, what if we could do it for pennies? <laughs> I said, okay, now, now you're just blowing my mind. Yeah. So what he's done is he's been able to essentially through a proprietary fermentation process he's been able to extract these basic lactic acid bacteria that are basically the chief fermenters whether it's milk yogurt cheese whatever you have right mm -hmm. these bacteria are the ones that convert it and convert the milk yes and now there's many strains of it obviously okay. so he found the acidophilus i believe it's called okay. yeah he we found he found this strain which is like finding a needle in a rice field. Mm. He managed to find it and then through a unique method, which nobody knows today, wow. he was able to ferment them inside of regular cow's milk and mass produce them. So these bacteria, they are normally, they only produce maybe a couple of grams of uh, amino acids, which are like the building blocks of everything, our body, our bones, yeah, everything, right? Protein, yeah. So there's like 20 primaries. So you get like 11 of them which your body can naturally produce. And then you have nine of them, which you have to get through food. Right. You have to eat food to break it down to amino acids, right? Some aminos are good for your hair. They produce your hair or your blood or whatever, right? Yep. So his, his probiotic, which we call a hyperbiotic, a super bacteria, basically. It's a whole new category that we've invented. And it's the first of its kind. You don't really get probiotics like this. He's been able to essentially convince these bacteria in completely organic way. This is not a GMO or some, you know, some al yeah. altering thing. It's yeah. completely natural. Yeah. Convince them to produce billions of amino acids oh, okay. and multiply into billions I inside see. of milk. I see. So during that fermentation process, you could just take literally a giant tankard of milk, throw these bacteria in and just wait for four hours oh. and you're done. And it's producing this amino blend yes. slash protein. So you could call it a soup super and then you protein dry powder. It. And then you dry it and you got the powder. And then he mixes it with corn and other really strong proteins. Oh. And then he feeds it to the animal. Oh, it's and a super protein powder. Yes. And when you feed it to them, what happens is it biologically alters their digestive system. Now they're digesting the food more organically in a better way, more efficiently. So all the nutrients are going where they need to go. 
That's number one. Uh, number see. two, it increases their growth by 20 to 30 percent. Wow. Organically. That means you don't have to use stupid antibiotics, which are just super unhealthy and yeah. dangerous, right? And, and steroids. Yeah. Like in America, over 80 percent of the antibiotics are used just to fatten up the animals yep. as steroids, right? So now we've built an organic steroid that deals with that problem. So now you can bring down the antibiotic usage wow. by almost 100 percent. Right, so you would only reserve the antibiotics for like really specific illnesses or something, not to just fatten them up. And then these antibiotics, what they do is, I mean, they're basically substances that kill bacteria. Bacteria eventually become immune to this. And that's where you get the coronavirus, mm. which came through animals again, by the way. Mm. It's the same industrial agriculture. Mm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these viruses that come on, the, the bird flu, a lot of these different things, yeah, they all from came from something yeah, like that, nasty right? Nasty agriculture yeah. and, and all the antibiotics, yeah, yes. great resistance strains, yeah. No one, no one, you know, when antibiotics for came, first came into creation, they weren't thinking, hey, well, let's feed this to 150 billion animals. Yeah. They were thinking, Let, let's give it to humans. It's a finite resource. You don't get a billion antibiotics. Most of the antibiotics we have today are actually already depleted. Like now there are people dying from common flus. Yeah. So there are specific strains now in viruses where it's like we can't even we don't even know what to do about it. They're resistant, yeah. Right. So, anyways, long story short, bring down antibiotic usage, and then here's the craziest part: the amount of food and water that these animals consume. I forgot to tell you that. Oh. Goes down by thirty to fifty percent. What? Now they can eat less food and eat drink less, less water. Yes. Now That's think about how much water. The water thing is like almost the biggest thing, right? Think about how much water you have to feed a cow. Because to that goes, in, one that goes of into beef. the amount of, uh, uh, because now you have to grow less food. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Which saves the plant already. So it's yeah. already altering the how, amount of food you have to grow on an annual basis. Think about India and China, the two largest, you know, agricultural, you know, capitals, basically, right? Imagine what happens when you say, listen, we can be like, I don't know, 50% more efficient now. Wow. It changes everything. It's a ripple effect. Okay. So food and water goes down. The animals are more peaceful now way more peaceful their their immune system is now skyrocketing which means that they can avoid a lot of the diseases that they normally have one example would be when these small pigs are born let's say nine or ten piglets are born right from a mother pig these piglets half of them die during birth because they automatically have chronic uh, vomiting they start to vomit and they have diarrhea so they're dying in that environment in so sad, yeah. yeah so we fed this probiotic to these pigs and it just stopped. Yeah. The diarrhea stopped. Everything just stopped because it just changed the digestive system. You can see it in real time. It's not something that I have to sell. And that's the main problem with probiotics yeah. is it's, uh, it's very subjective. The way, like, they're not even allowed to say, like, our probiotic promises this. Uh -huh. Because it's like this bacteria might have a different effect in another right. body. It depends on your gut biome and yes. what's going on. But yeah. this, this particular probiotic is so powerful that we've never had a case where one pig didn't work and the other one did. Got it's it. consistent across the board. Wow. To do the test, we actually, the very first test we did uh, ages ago, we went to a farm in Armenia in the Kaputan village and they have a farm there with like about 100, 200 pigs. And these, you can smell it from like a mile away. Oh, it's yeah. pure poison. They don't have ventilation systems, they have nothing. Yeah. You go there, we actually, I, I put together a custom device to analyze with infrareds the, um, the methane levels and the carbon dioxide. It was at like 12. Now, to put that into context, a five is already critical. They were at a 12. We gave this, so we told them, listen, for free, we're gonna feed your pigs for one week. Riley, 24 hours later, it was at a four. Wow. So that's over a 60% reduction. Wow. <laughs> so this is, so the, the actual waste that comes out yes. is, is giving us less CO2 and methane, and they're releasing less methane gas? Yes, all at once. Wow, okay. So what also happens is that waste, when we say it's releasing less, what that really means is it's actually converting the whole waste into fertilizer now. It's no longer a toxic element. It's better, better for a lot, better, better waste. Yeah. So that yeah. waste, if you take that and you just literally pour it into the ground, yeah. it's good for the ground. Yeah. It's nourishing the ground. And all those amino acids we're talking about is in the waste. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can take California red worms. I don't know if you have any experience with fertilizing and stuff like that, with gardening and stuff. Yeah. But basically for composting, the best fertilizer is done by these worms, worms by yeah. these red worms. So what you do is you take them, put it on the waste. And within like a few days, they just multiply. 
mm-hmm. and they convert this into fucking gold. Yeah. They call it bio hummus. <laughs> bio hummus. That yes. is the good stuff. The yes. Gold. There you go. So with bio nice. hummus, now this bio hummus is excellent for growing anything. It also helps replace a lot of the pesticides and a lot of these other another one another one there you go yeah i'm like the dj khaled it's like it does this and this yeah. and another one yeah definitely so another hit yeah um okay now now you so, have to lose pesticides because yeah. the fertilizer is good and it's so like, how many ripple effects did we just create yeah yeah and then with that waste what also happens is that's a new revenue model for a lot of these farms where now they can actually sell this waste to farms Wow, as now fertilizer. they can use the, use the super fertilizer and sell that too. And sell that too. So now you have a new revenue model for these people. And finally, what that leads to is the waste itself is actually not hurting the animals anymore. A lot of time in the industrial farms, what you'll see is they're sleeping in their own waste. They're ne- eating their nasty shit. Literally, <laughs> literally. In this case, because the waste now is organic and it's natural, a lot of the pesticides, antibiotics, everything that would be stuck in that waste is no longer stuck there. Now it's gone. It's right, automatically for, right. you know, push, pushing it out. from the get-go. And if you had to ask, well, how, what, on a biological level, how is this happening? Well, here's how. Because of the amino acid process, the fermentation process we were talking about earlier, what happens is these bacteria develop a suit of armor around them, an amino acidic envi- uh, armor that allows them to travel through the entire body. I see. Mouth to the other see, end whereas traditional probiotics don't they they don't they, they die in the acidic yes. stomach they do and that's okay. why like all these nasty elements right these negative bacteria right uh, benevolent malevolent bacteria they are in the stomach they thrive in the stomach which is why it's so unhealthy so if you have this super bacteria like iron man literally traveling through the body and it's able to just grab hold of them almost like a magnet just sucks them in and just takes them out of the body without hurting them without fighting with them it just convinces them the problem with antibiotics it's it's kind of like it's pure fire when you take in an antibiotic oh. you're just burning the whole body everything, yeah. it blows up everything it nukes everything yeah, yeah which is why in chemo for example in cancer yeah. uh, you know what happens is like yeah. you're basically taking all these antibiotics and then you have to take a probiotic to fill your body with bacteria again because you're just killing everything. It's kind of yeah. like using, it's, it's, you know, there's a Bengal tiger on the loose. Instead of hunting it down, sending a hunter after it, let's just burn the fucking forest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's so, chemo. Kill every dividing yeah. cell. Yeah. Now, we're using the same approach to raise the animals we consume. How does that make you feel, mm-hmm. right? And all those uh, diseases and everything is getting transferred to consumers. There was a hospital research that was done where they did a survey and they realized that 800 out of 1,000 patients were all suffering from meat-related diseases. Wow. What the fuck? Huh. Wow. One way or another, those bacteria, those problems get transferred to you. Now, we did a test where for one month, we raised the pigs, we raised the cows and everything, and then they butchered one of the pigs and they cut it open and they realized, first oh, of all... another one's coming. I know another one's say. coming. You told me. The, the lungs of these animals were pure clean. Mm. When they're stuck in the methane environment, it's all black. It's, it's kind of like if I took you and I just locked you in a lift elevator and I just pumped it with, with, uh, with what do you call it, nicotine mm. for like a whole, whole day. How would you feel? Like you're in t- in, you would just die. Now imagine if you took these pigs and you're just sticking them there for three months and they're just breathing this methane, which is so strong oh, that I you, see. it's killing them. I see. And then you're killing the animal and then you're eating what they were breathing the whole yeah, time. Yeah, methane, uh, methane smoked there you pork go. meat. There you go. <laughs> yeah, basically. Methane, <laughs> well, methane barbecue, you know. <laughs> so okay. uh, it gets you that nice smoky flavor. <laughs> <laughs> nice smoky methane. It gas. is what it is. Yeah. So what we're thinking is this, right? We're solving that problem by saying we're cutting down the methane so much that it's now natural. The amount that's left, you can't get rid of that. That's a natural thing. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's just gas. Yeah, it's part of the process. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's fine. But those animals, like we, when we went back to that farm in Kaputan, the smell was completely gone. Wow. The villagers who were living there for four or five years who were smelling this every day, they're like, our kids, their eyes were burning outside. They can't even go outside to fucking play anymore. Because this farmer has, you know, influence with the mayor and stuff like that. So they can't kick him out. It was in the news. They're like, we, they were beating each other up and shit. Because they just don't know what to do with this guy. Yeah. And we went and gave them the thing. Now there's no smell. The animals are healthy. And by the Another way, in terms, of, in terms of the, um, what do you call it? Uh, the consumer side. 
the flavor of the meat is Damn, completely different. The flavor of the meat is different. There was someone who was raising pigs for 40 years. He's like, dude, I know every taste a pig can give, yeah. give out. He knows, he knows all never, the parts of the pig. He's, he's a like, pig expert. Yeah, he's like, I've never tasted a pig like this in my life. Another one. So to prove this to people, what we've done is we've been sending free samples to farms, literally yeah. free. Yeah. And we don't, we just say like, here's my number. And these farmers have been coming back to us and saying, um, how the fuck did you do that? Okay, so <laughs> what I'm, what's going on in my mind is this sounds like a billion dollar company. So I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I'm going, can I come on your yacht in Phuket? <laughs> can, can I be invited to your yacht parties? That's I'm, I'm all too I'm simple. thinking about, I'm bro. too simple for that. I'm too simple, I'm the man. wolf of Wall Street. Uh, is that it? Like, <laughs> yes. You're going to be doing... <laughs> Dude, they were, they were, he was telling me that in Spain, they're calling him the Pablo Escobar of Oh, pigs. Jesus. Now, I feel like that's going to be trending now because of you. Dude, hashtag, <laughs> hashtag Pablo Escobar Pablo. pigs because the pigs, uh, they get an- addicted. another one, they get addicted to it because, I mean. Organically, it's not a bad thing. That makes sense because they're addicted to good nutrition. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, it's like you're you're dealing with their problem. <laughs> like, so, it's good for them. Wow, this sounds like it's solving a problem that, agri- you know, livestock has had, is not been yes. giving the proper nutrition. But here's the crazy own. thing. It's not just for animals. It's for humans, too. I was going to say that. And we actually, I've been testing, bringing the product here to Thailand as well. And I found out that just like, I think last year, the Thai government actually said that they want to bring down antibiotic usage by 30%. So yeah. I talked to them. I was like, what if I brought it down by 100%? How do you feel about that? <laughs> so like, you're what? already in talks with the Thai? I am. This so guy, I the, idea is, the idea is that I want to be able to create a couple of really impactful companies like this. Yeah. That just demonstrate that, dude, you could be dropping out of high school, which I'm not recommending. Yeah. Like, I think you need a great education. I feel like life was my teacher. Yeah. I feel like because I moved so much, I just, I didn't have a chance to go study at a really nice university. Yeah. But I want to get back to that someday. Okay. But I, I think that now the barrier to entry is so low that worst case scenario, if you were in a situation where you didn't go to college or you didn't have the type of education that I did. You could be literally a farmer in Thailand and you could go create a rat master, which is what happened with Goff. Goff yeah. barely even left Chiang Mai. He's grown up here his whole life. Yeah, it's Chiang Mai University. And that would happen, yeah. So, and you know. He, and he, he came up with burritos because like, they would make them at home. And then he, he was like, oh, no He one's loves doing, doing it. Yeah, yeah. He didn't do it because his friend told him to. Yeah, you know? you're right. So anyways, with Mirai now, we're in Spain and uh, we're also in India, in Armenia, obviously. Um, and what we've done is uh, we've convinced one of the biggest farms there, like I think it's the third largest one, to manufacture this for 7 million animals already, which is wow. an amazing beta test. Wow. <laughs> so we're doing that. We've already uh, got in touch with uh, the leading uh, pig farm in Maharashtra in India, the state. Okay. That's great. And these people are just so open to it. And before I had an, I, I was allergic I was repelled by these big companies because I thought, well, you're ruining the planet. But I have to be honest with you. I think that the fact that they don't care about anything but money is the best thing. Mm. Because if they only care about making money, I can propose a better way to make money. Uh. So you're not going to convince industrial agriculture to just do a 180. Change your model from factory to free range. It's not going to happen. Never. They're going to always think about, how do I make one penny more? Yeah. These people would rather, and they say this proudly. Yeah. They even joke about it during conferences. Like, I would rather go to my grave with my stock price up here than br- let my stock price dip by 1%. Yeah. So you're going to go put up picket signs and be like, go vegan, all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's all these movements don't realize that industrial agriculture is moving so fucking fast that you can never keep up with it. Yeah. You have to propose something that is good for business. That is the only way you're going to change their minds. Wow. And the thing is with the political side, the politicians are in the same boat. They're like, listen, I can't even convince. I'm like the president. How the fuck am I convincing this giant yeah. company yeah. to not make money? Yeah, <laughs> politics, governments is money, is That's companies it. and conglomerates. So yeah. why do we have to treat this as an either or? Let's yeah. shut them down. Let's go to war. Let's, like, no, let's work together. Let's use biotech. And by the way, I think after working on Mirai for the last year or two, I realized that biotech is literally the thing that can save the planet. Yeah. Because we're talking about living entities. We're talking about there are other people who've come up with really cool ideas to bring down carbon emissions. Yeah. Like in the air and all kinds of crazy things. And I'm like, this is the way we fix problems. So 
This is why when Silicon Valley, like every other thing that comes out says we're revolutionary, I'm like, no, see, this is revolutionary. Yeah. What you're doing is nice. Wow. You know, so yeah. if we can bring together, <laughs> if we can bring together these type of companies under one umbrella and then allow talented developers, designers, whatever, to work together on the same vision, yeah. those people, th these products are going to inspire them to create better things too. Mm. So mm -hmm. when they say like what I do, I create. I am a creator. I am not. I use whatever tools I have, whether I'm a write, whether it's writing or music or whatever I can get my hands on, to create. So mm -hmm. I think if we can together, we can inspire people through your podcast or whatever channels we have yeah. to say, figure out who you are, not what you do. Who are you? If you know who you are, everything else will start to fucking make sense. I do this because it's who I am. I do podcasts not because I like YouTube. I do it because I love connecting with creators. I love inspiring them and also inspiring myself, right? So I think that sets a new standard and I think this decade could go down as literally the most creative decade in history. Yeah. The amount of tools that are available to us. And if we don't do that, if we don't inspire others like us, especially younger than us who are just kind of lost in the, you know, seeing all these pretty tools around them. If we yeah. don't give them a little bit of direction, I think we're going to be very embarrassed later on. I want to look back in 10 years and be like, I planted so many fucking seeds yeah. that all I have is shade at this point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Let's go. <laughs> so, you know, do some soul searching, you know, you know, as I always say, you know, do Think about what you want to do, not what your parents or your friends or your grandparents want you to do. You know, it's the same message. Look inside yourself and go deep. And, you know, it's a journey to figure out, you know, even who you are, you know, and even what your passion is and even, you know, your big visions. Yes. But, you know, go inside and, you know, take some time to, to really take that thinking time. Entrepreneurs Absolutely. say your thinking time is so, so important. And I try to do that. We're trying to do that with our new company. We're trying to. I'm like, guys, we need to actually set aside time just for thinking. So do these long walks, whether it's with yourself or with a buddy, and you're like, you're you're going in self, or do do some um, some massage meditation, or you know, do some some cannabis, whatever type, types of vitamins you like to take to whatever get in your zone, you. whatever, whatever you like. Yeah, exactly. I said that on yesterday's <laughs> podcast. Don't want to don't want to um, um, forget about magic mushrooms. It's also great, which, uh, you know, in the right set and setting, you know, look it up. It's already legalizing in, in some cities in the U.S., which is oh, really? great. Uh, yeah, in Denver, it's already <laughs> wow. decriminalized, and also in Oakland, it already is. So that revolution's coming, which is, goes hand in hand with the most creative decade that's coming. In. But, it, but this is the new enlightenment. I mean, it already has been since the internet, but the 2020s, oh my God, it's going to be an explosion. And so glad that I ran in, into you today. It was, it, was, it. it was meant to be. Let's get our big vision caps in caps on and also to hammer home that point again really cool point about just how special it is to be able to live here in Chiang Mai and how cheap it is don't just think about you know these little online businesses he took a food truck and turned that into a million dollar franchise it's as successful in, in Maya and now it's in Phuket and I'm sure they're gonna have one in Bangkok can you Some please put one in Bangkok I would love to can you please put one in Bangkok? I just don't want to push the team too fast. Yeah, exactly. You know, like we've had franchising offers, everything. I just want to take it one step at a time. Yeah. But you know what Meraki means? Tell me the, the name of it. Is so it's it Greek. Greek. M-E-R-A-K-I, Meraki. Okay. It means to do something with your soul. Mm. Put your heart into what you do, yeah, right? That's heart. why I chose that. And I think, uh, and with Mirai, Mirai is Japanese for future. So nature is the future. That's kind of the whole, you know, yeah. pitch. And I think now... It's like one person could come up with all of these things. But I was influenced by so many people to get here. So I think that use everything around you as an influence. Use people as influence. Get inspired. And then go take your mushrooms or go to a Buddhist temple or like go to Chiang Mai. Do whatever you got to do to figure out who you are, why you, what makes you tick. Yeah. Because then you're going to meet people like Riley, people like me, and people like many people around you who would inspire you to go even further. But if Riley doesn't know what you're doing, if I don't know what you're doing, if all I see is surface level, that this person just has an online business, mm. which in and of itself, nothing's wrong with it. I know dropshippers who are brilliant at yeah. what they do, right? But for every brilliant dropshipper with a vision, there's a billion people who just got told to do dropshipping. Ah. You see my point? It's the same in design, the same in development. I'm not picking on any one industry. Yeah. So stop going with the flow. 
go against the current, create your own path, create your own river, and hopefully one day that becomes an ocean. And don't do it because you want to be rich or whatever. I, my dad always said me, he's like, don't chase money. Money should chase you. You should be so fucking good that you can't be ignored. Ooh. Where people will notice you. You'll be walking down the street and be like, hey, I, I saw you there. Like, or whatever, you know, like, and that inspirational, that, that you, my philosophy is 90% give, 10% take. Uh. What, look what Riley's doing. Like, the amount of stuff you're giving out, the amount of knowledge you're dropping, right? Where a few years ago, that was a whole new industry for you. You didn't think like, oh, I'm going to be this podcast guru, you know, whatever. Like now you're at over 50,000 subscribers, people who are following you, getting inspired every day. And I guarantee you they're telling someone else about it. Yep. Right. So it's like create that ripple effect. Yeah. And I think the if people realize that your job in life is to inspire others, your job is to help others, to serve others. There's all a stigma with the word serve. Yeah. They think that that means I'm a slave or something. They don't realize that serving is a human thing. Yeah, you're happy when you're connecting. Yeah. When you do that, you're going to love everything else you do. People are always going to come and try to give back and reciprocate and inspire mm. you to do something. But when you're just doing this one way thing where I just want to be rich and be on my yacht or steal from others or just rip people off, um, at that point, you're just a scammer. You're a piece of shit. And Whatever success you have, you'll never be able to enjoy it. Because one day you're gonna be sitting on that yacht, all alone, with people that you pay to be there with you, yeah. right? And that's gonna be like a, a life that you didn't expect. You have to kind of go beyond the materialistic level. If you had to say like, what's your definition of spiritual? That is spiritual to me, that you're doing something